Next up is Benedict Rudolph. He's uh, in the D6 uh, Research and Development Department, and he's going to give you a little introduction on how to scale bird route servers. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, in the next couple of minutes, I will tell you about our experiences at DigX R&D to um, come up with a setup to uh, scale, the every, um, scale the popular bird route server software. So you probably know it um, by heart or already. Um, Bird is an open source uh, IP routing daemon for BGP and some other protocols, but we're focusing on the application of Bird at an IXP with BGP here. It's written in C, it's open source software, and it's widely deployed. And this is one of the motivation uh, factors that why we looked into it. Um, there's a large variety of IXPs using it, uh, small ones, big ones, and um, us being one of the larger IXPs, uh, we have many BGP neighbors connected to our route servers, so um, as, as other large IXPs have. Um, most people like it uh, because of its flexible configuration syntax and its um, reliable and stable operation. Um, however, there's uh, some problems we faced when using BERT in a setup with many BGP neighbors. And the last point, reliable and stable operations, is questionable if you scale your setup to bigger dimensions. So what were the problems that we faced? Um, especially we want to avoid a certain thing, uh, this, what I call the spiral of death syndrome. Um, it is if a high number of your peers that are connected to the route server churns, it goes away, either due to a physical link or a maintenance that was uh, unannounced. Um, and they come up, uh, they receive a large number of routes from the route server. And this creates a high load because each and every peer has to be served. Um, and so we found the BERT process uh, consuming 100% CPU for a longer period of time. And if then one or two peers begin to flap or do something weird because of their router having a problem or whatever, then it shakes up and doesn't come to a natural end. So the process never converges. Um, we also notice a performance deg degradation in the event of a protocol reload. So if we want to um, restart an individual peer, um, this, uh, the time span it takes is also enlarged because of the, the huge size of the routing table, the many, many prefixes in the table, and the many, many updates. So we want to improve the situation. We have a route server, and we have a couple of unused CPU cores idling around, um, and we asked ourselves, ourselves, why do not use them for something um, yeah, to, to mitigate the situation? Um, so by splitting the load on many bird processes, as we came up, we could reduce the individual load for one process. So one process would you have um, fewer peers and thereby also fewer prefixes in one process, um, and thereby it would be faster. The calculation of the BGP best path, everything a route server normally does, the filtering, each and every step would be faster because the problem size is reduced. Yeah, and maybe using that setup, we could serve more BGP neighbors in total. Um, one non-functional requirement was that it should be easy to test, to deploy, and maintain. And uh, therefore, we um, agreed that there should be no client-side configuration changes. So all that I will present is happening inside the IXP's network or inside the route server and doesn't need any alterations at the client side. And it doesn't need any alteration to the source code of BERT. So how does it... So let me rephrase the problem again um, to make it a bit more prominent. Um, we want to make multiple BERT processes behave like a single one. Um, I think you can guess it from the graphic. Yeah, There's a logical route server in that big square 
uh, and there's multiple bird processes that should share the load, but in the but facing the BGP neighbors, they should behave like one. They should, of course, or need, of course, to share a common routing information base, a common master table. And they should also come up with the same answers to the peers. They should calculate the same BGP best paths. Um, they should also appear as the same BGP neighbor, although we later found out um, the individual processes might have an um, individual BGP uh, neighbor ID um, because it's not checked anywhere, as far as I know. Um, and they should share, most importantly, one IP address um, to keep the configuration stable. Yeah, incoming BGP um, connections should be balanced to one, two, three N processes. So the solution should be somehow scalable, depending on what the load is. We could use one or two or more processes. So what are the uh, building blocks of our solution? Um, at first, we, we um, configured a private subnet on the loopback interface. This is where all the, BG, the BERT processes will reside in the end. So we have a private subnet with private IP addresses. Then we need to link the master tables of those processes. Um, and of course, we uh, need a full mesh so that we can be sure that updates propagate to, from each process to each and every other process. Um, we use eBGP because we, as you may know, in the BGP best path uh, selection process, eBGP takes precedence over IBGP. And thereby, we didn't want to come into any corner cases, and therefore we configured it to use eBGP. And we also had to enable the add path feature, otherwise um, not all routes would end up in the master table. So <laughs> this is our small private subnet with multiple bird processes. And then we somehow need to assign incoming BGP sessions towards one or the other process. Um, we thereby split the peering LAN in our model into slices and assign peers based on a more specific subnet to one of the processes. This is a static assignment. You could also do it dynamically. Um, we tried to use um, a TCP proxy like HA proxy, but yeah, it didn't turn out to be um, to be viable, um, and so we skipped that. Um, right now, we're using uh, dynamic load balancing um, in IP tables. No, we're using static load balancing based on the subnet. At, but you could also do it dynamically, like for each and every incoming uh, TCP session, you have a random. Um, a random number generator and then assign the process to one of the... And essentially it's using destination net to um, track the connections, the incoming connections. Um, some more details to the load balancing. As I explained, the peering line is split um, into subnets uh, and we use destination net to assign peers to um, to, to a, one of those BERT processes that, that run on our route server. Um, of course, um, I don't want to put it under the carpet. There's also an overhead involved. Um, we have, when we have N processes, we also have N copies of the master table. And if one new route announcement is coming in, uh, we're sending within our private subnet um, N-1 updates to the other um, processes all via TCP um, with all the overhead involved. <laughs> um, although it might be a hacky solution, uh, I will show it to you that it, it could work out. And I also have tests to prove this. So we wanted to test this setup systematically. Um, therefore, I grabbed an existing open source framework. Um, it's called BGPerf and uh, provided by the OSRG group at NTT Labs. You can download it from GitHub. It's a Python-based framework. 
and um, yeah, I enhanced it to be able to test that setup. So how does the testing process look like? Um, it's basically divided into three steps. Uh, in the first phase, the initialization phase, um, the Python script is run and in it, it initializes uh, the test setup. So it uh, gets some parameters. What are the parameters that I tested? Um, I wanted to know how does the setup behave with different numbers of peers, like starting with a small number of peers and then increasing the number of peers of the route server. Um, and I wanted to know how does the setup behave if I take one bird processes, process as we all know the setup and then if I take two and if I take four processes to split the load. Yeah, it generates the according config files, puts them in a directory in the file system and then hands over to the next phase of the, the benchmark execution. Um, this is the setup phase and it uses Docker to spawn uh, three containers. One container for the route server, this is where the bird process lives. Um, one container called monitor uh, with a Go BGP instance that queries uh, the route server um, to know how many routes it received. And a, contest, um, a container called a tester. Uh, this contains multiple Exa BGP instances to simulate the peers. Um, they are all started with configs that were generated in the previous steps. Uh, and then um, the test is executed. Um, all Exa BGP instances contact the route server, advertise the prefixes, and um, the route server is under load in the execution phase. So uh, we, in regular time intervals, for every second, we lock uh, a timestamp, um, the CPU utilization in the Docker container that has the route server and the memory consumption. Yeah, and we repeat every benchmark configuration three times to get <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a valid outcome. So you may ask yourself, what, what does, how do the results look like? And I brought um, some example graphs. Um, of course, this is many steps, as you know, um, three times, three setups, seven different peer configs. It's, ma it's, it's many individual configurations, but I brought three examples to you. Um, yeah, now I need to know how the laser pointer works. Here it is. Um, so this shows one bird process and the time to learn um, seven, six, six, seven, six, seven, six, 765,000 prefixes. This is um, 100 prefixes for every peer and 756 pros, um, pre, pre peers. So we have uh, three, three lines in this graph. We have the memory consumption of our container that has the route server. We have the CPU utilization in blue and we have the amount of learned prefixes. Uh, this is the black curve in the graph. So the experiment starts, all peers come up, uh, they begin to announce their routes, CPU is at 100%, okay, between 50 and 60 seconds, there's a small break. <laughs> I don't know what the process is doing here, but then it continues and learns more and more routes. And at the yellow line, 165 seconds, the experiment is finished because our route server has learned all the routes. This is for one bird process. Now I take two with the described setup and it looks a bit different. The, the axes are the same. Um, it takes up the load um, in, a, in a higher speed. Yeah, it learns faster. However, then it reaches some point where it, sorry, where it takes them uh, some time to learn the last few routes, but in the end it finishes uh, 15 seconds earlier than uh, if I just use one process. Yeah, and um, so there's, there's, an, there's, an imp there's an improvement for that scenario. Um, and if I take four processes, it, yeah, it's not much different. Uh, I can reduce the time to learn all that prefixes. Furthermore, um, 
I also consume more CPU, of course. It's now 400%, so four cores running full speed. Uh, and it also consumes more memory. As you see, the access is now up to 16 gigabytes, whereas in the previous two cases, it was just eight. Um, so, um, I take all that results. The, the main thing is the time to learn all prefixes and all the scenarios and then um, plot the different scenarios in another graph. So we have the small setups with a small number of peers to the left of the x-axis and then an increasing number of prefixes and peers because each and every peer has 100 prefixes um, going to the right of the x-axis. So the blue is uh, the measured data. This means um, the measurement results, the execution times that I got for all those benchmark runs uh, labeled with error bars um, that are deduced from the three executions that I did for each and every configuration. So what we see, we have a large variation in execution time for the small setups. Um, this may be due to some I.O. waiting or other issues within the setups that were not under my control. Um, or maybe I just have to repeat those small tests more often until they converge. So the, there's a large variation here. But um, as, as you know, in the multi-rip setup that we have in a route server, we have a super linear scaling because for each and every peer edit, we have to copy the data structures and also the, the workload um, is enlarged. And um, I just um, calculated a polynomial fit curve um, to prove <laughs> that uh, with a, a confidence of 99, um, yeah, it follows a polynomial, um, um, a polynomial yeah, fit, <laughs> whatever. Um, now let's look at the results for two processes. Um, we have a quite low variation. Um, which means the error bars, the results are more consistent, error bars are smaller. Um, however, due to memory constraints, I couldn't measure the largest configuration. Um, yeah, and it also follows that um, polynomial trend. The same for four processes. Um, here, the memory limit even um, hit further, and the second largest configuration was omitted. Um, and we also, yeah, see. The, those, the, the, anom the anomaly for small uh, configurations. So now I take all the results from the three previous graphs together to compare them. Um, and we, like a question that, that I want to answer here is, what is the optimal number of processes? Um, and we have the results for one process in light blue, um, for two processes in red, and for four in dark blue, um, also labeled with the error bars. So you see th those small configurations, um, we can look into those later on, but I myself was asking myself, like, what is the effect um, for larger configuration? If you take 250 peers, um, you notice here that we can reduce the time also in that case, also in that case, if you compare it with four processes, in some, in some configurations we have, uh, we need to take a longer time, but if, if we have more peers, then four processes somehow pay off. There seems to be an optimum for four processes at 764, um, 65. So there is cases where two processes give you uh, up to 60% lower execution times. So this somehow means this could be a sweet spot or is a sweet spot in our configuration. If you take four processes, you have more overhead, you have more communication overhead, more memory overhead, etc. Um, so this eats up some, um, some gain that you have because you can utilize more, more CPUs. So this is basically the takeaway. Um, it can be done. 
Um, depending on what resources you want to consume and have available, you can fiddle with the number of processes that you want to take. And now I will um, wrap everything up and uh, provide a summary. So, as I hopefully could prove to you, um, multiple processes um, improve the convergence time under, under high load. Uh, but it comes at the cost of increased resource usage. Um, there's a moderate increase with two processes. Um, we have more memory consumption with four processes. Um, the speed up that I gained is partly um, equalized by the overhead that I have. The overhead, as you remember, was due to the replication of the master table and the communication overhead. And now we could think of ways to improve further on that. Um, we could reduce the communication overhead, for example, if we used um, just plain POSIX Unix sockets instead of TCP <laughs> um, to communicate locally on the same machine. This would be an easy fix, but however required to touch the BERT source code. Or we could think of a simple multi-threading um, fix for BERT. Um, we have that multi-rip setup, so there's an own BGP protocol instance for every peer, and we could come up with a system where every peer runs in, a, in an own process, um, similar to what RIPE presented with the uh, new route collector setup. They have an own XRBGP process for every peer of the route collector. Um, one could tweak BERT in a way to, to, be, to be the same. Um, as I stated in the caveats, um, I used uh, simulated peers, so each and every peer has 100 uh, prefixes, which is kind of um, the average number that you find at an IXP, but not realistic. So if you would be realistic, you had, like, would need to have peers with low numbers of prefixes and some with very high numbers of prefixes, and look what those effects would be. Um, yeah, there's those waiting in the bird process. Um, we could also, I, I ran the, the tester, the XRBGP testers on the same host as I did the route server, but I ensured to have enough resources available, so I had an 8-core machine and 64 gigabytes of RAM. Um, but one could move the, the tester processes out to a separate machine. This is also something that I want to do in the, the future. Okay, I hope it was interesting to you. Um, and, well, if you have some questions or have some remarks, um, I'm happy to take your, your questions. Hi, Stefan from Denik. Um, I'm wondering, the model you applied to test it, you said every peer is announcing around 250 prefixes and all prefixes are unique, or what kind of overlap did you apply? Oh, yes. Um, each and every peer announced 100 prefixes, exactly. And um, as far as I remember, uh, they were all unique. So they were all best paths. Okay. It's we can have a, ch a chat a little, mm -hmm. little later. So a couple of things uh, you already recognize, they are not optimal. So um, there is some work um, long ago. It was it's based on the work of Sebastian Spies. It's called uh, Hoofprints. Yeah. And there, there there was some sort of thesis around uh, how much overlapping has to be there and so on and so on. Because I think this picture is not pretty good realistic. And especially because you're running all the stuff on the same box. Yeah. Um, running the testers and the route server under, um, under test on the same box um, is indeed a, a limitation, but not uh, relating to the performance numbers because I extracted the performance counters from Docker. And Docker, as you know, is LXC containers and has separate accounting facilities for resource accounting. So I'm quite confident that the resource accounting is... Um, yeah, but um, for example, those stalls may be due to some I.O. problem or whatever. Um, and if I take the testers external, um, I could mitigate that. Yeah, the, the thing is, you have, a, you have a, um, a single threaded application, which you run with a lot of other um, uh, processes on the, on the box. That's not a scenario on the route service. Yesterday I discussed with your yeah. colleague that it's even wise maybe to think about disabling hyper-threading on the, on the box. I so did it. I okay. disabled hyperthreading and I um, introduced CPU sets 
to move the testers to the first four CPU cores and assi assign um, one, two, or four CPU cores to the Docker container running all the BERT instances. So only the BERT instances um, like competed um, for the resources assigned to the separate BERT container. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Nice work. So go on. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Hi, Peter Hessler with OpenBGPD. Um, is your testing framework available either publicly or privately so other alt, um, implementations of BGP can do their own set, set of testing and yeah. try and discover their own performance or other limitations? Um, as stated, it's not my um, testing framework. Uh, I just improved it a little bit. Um, I took it from GitHub. It's uh, on GitHub slash uh, OSRG slash BGPerf. Um, and it currently runs all the BGP demons in a Docker container. Um, and the possible enhancement, I think we discussed this previously, to te also uh, be able to test um, open, BGP, open BGPD would be to spawn a VM instead of a Docker container and um, run it in there. So uh, as of right now, this um, you can take one benchmark configuration um, and test different BGP demons. Um, it support right as of now. It supports um, Bird, uh, Quagga, and uh, Go BGP. Mm -hmm. So it was made to show uh, that Go BGP performs. <laughs> and what I did, um, I added an own Python class to it for that multiple Bird setup, like instantiating and generating the configs for multiple birds, configuring IP tables and DNet. And so this, is, this was my contribution. Um, yeah, and um, if I feel that um, this is a good setup and if I conducted further tests, I might uh, release the, the, the multiple bird version of, of this um, as, a, as a pull request or uh, in a separate re repository. But I have to ask my, my boss first. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, Thomas King from DKIX, so as I'm your uh, boss somehow, I can confirm that we will, <laughs> this we will make this publicly available. Peter, no voice. Okay, great. Okay, any further questions? Or is his boss maybe willing to say something if we don't do it? <laughs> okay, then thank you very much. Yeah, thank you too.